Hello everyone and welcome to Mutual Knowledge. I'm Gauthier Lamotte, your host, and today my guest is Alain Broustaille, another fellow Frenchman. That's a law of series. I have many French-speaking people speaking English in my podcast episodes these, these days. Hi Alain, nice to have you here. Hello Gauthier. So, Alain, can you introduce yourself in a few words for our audience? Okay, very good. So as you said, I'm French, based in Paris. 20 three years of professional experience now. So I graduated from a business school. So not from IT, not from engineering, but I spent my last 33 years working in IT, in uh, innovation, new technologies, mostly uh, on the software, financial software um, side. So I've been working and I'm still working with uh, uh, software vendors for banks, financial institutions. Around 13, 14 years ago, I discovered the world of consulting. So I start working with a group called Sword Group, now Coexia, as the head of the consulting activity in Paris. Uh, along the way, in 2017, I discovered Bitcoin. So I knew about Bitcoin, but I bought my first Bitcoin in 2017. And because I was curious, because I was into consulting, I decided to open the book. So basically to, to look at the white paper, to you know get the information. I loved it. I said, wow, that technology, blockchain, Uh, not just Bitcoin, but blockchain in itself could be a revolution. So in 2018, I decided to start working on it as a consultant. And on January 1st, 2019, I decided that would be my main activity. So right now for six years, almost six years, uh, I'm the president of Blockchain Easy. It's a consulting company dedicated to blockchain and crypto assets uh, uh, advisory services. And I do have uh, some of my clients, you know, that I represent with a, a more specific um, uh, with the jobs to be done. Um, but that's uh, where I'm. I'm a father of two also. Uh, very happy and proud of them. And as you can say, I'm very sorry. You know, my accent is not that good. I, uh, I used to live in the past in many different countries, but now I'm very uh, French based. All right. Well, um, I'm curious. So, so it became your main activity very quickly. Uh, What is your job as a consultant? Uh, you told me how you went into the, the blockchain world, uh, but basically, who do you consult for? Are these, um, these clients people who have already a business and who want to set foot on the, the forbidden land of cryptocurrencies and blockchain? Or are these clients people who are already in this world willing to have a business case or both? Yeah, so consulting, you know, is a very broad world, so you can put whatever you want in it. Basically, if you want, in, like, intellectual services, you can say it's consulting. So on my side, I would say it's it's a, um, kind of a high range consulting, close to strategy consulting. This is what I do the best, but then sometimes we decline it into more uh, operational uh, activities. The clients uh, um, I prefer to have. Personally, I'm talking about myself because I also lead other consultants, uh, companies that are not yet into blockchain or crypto assets and that wants to know if they should go. Mm. So it can be a startup, they have the feeling that, you know, they are like, I don't know, financial services and say, hey, what about if we create a plugin for crypto assets? It could be a startup or a small company um, or a man, lawyer, like low, 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 you know, Law, can be d'avocat. <laughs> Lawyers, you yeah, know, law finance. can we use a, a blockchain for intellectual property uh, protection? So there are ideas, they've read about it and they're thinking, should I do it? It can be a bank, you know, the bank saying, wow, my competitor is going into crypto, should I go? So at that stage, these people, they need to have, a, a, so they really, they need a consult. They, they have a question, should I go? But they, they, they have difficulties to explain clearly the situation. So when these people come to me, when I meet with them, often I say, first thing, you need to understand what we're talking about. So we need to understand what is crypto, what is your market, how does it work, what is blockchain. And then we need to go into what, is, what it is that you're doing today, what could you do tomorrow, and is it a good idea not to use the technology you just discovered for that uh, sense. So yeah, almost all my uh, consulting jobs start with some um, training. Right. Either they don't know blockchain oh. at all, yeah, or oh. they know blockchain, but they don't know uh, the legal uh, requirement for that kind of activity. Uh, they have no clue about uh, this specific, you know, market, and they want to know, can I use blockchain for, I don't know, agriculture, uh, agricultural uh, requirements? Can I use blockchain for digital signature? Can I use blockchain for, I don't know, accounting uh, uh, matters? So, 
it always starts with, okay, let's try to share the same vocabulary. And then once we agree, the question is, uh, is it good or not ID? So basically like opportunity assessment. Uh, to be honest, 80% of my client at that stage say, okay, it's not the good timing for us. Either it's a bad idea, or it's not the good timing, or it's too, too expensive, more complex, or the competition is already there, we didn't know. So this project stops or, 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 or they slow down. And then maybe one out of five keeps on. And at that stage, sometimes they say, thank you, Alan, I don't need your help anymore. And sometimes they say, oh, now I need some IT developers. I need some business analysts. I need to write down specification requirements. I need to, 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 teach, to, to teach, you know, train, I don't know, 200 people in my current organization. We need to develop things. Okay. At that moment, you know, we go into another phase that we could call consulting. It's more about, you know, like a, a operation or pro project, you know, IT project, I would say more classical IT projects. So, okay, so you dispense legal training, technical training, overall... Um, legal, legal, I wouldn't say legal. I, I bring some lawyers sometimes, but I know enough of the legal environment, you know, to help people... Uh, uh, yeah, so, so that they're not, they're not clueless what's going on. about the thing. Exactly. Okay, exactly. and so... Um, Allow me to to uh, dwell deeper in this uh, into this question, special uh, specifically. Uh, so you have businesses who want to set foot in the in the land of crypto. Great. Yeah. Uh, are these people who are willing to use blockchain based technology in order to fuel their business? Like, uh, for example, um, we at Moon have a payment solution for Salesforce. So we have Salesforce users. Uh, yeah. Where sometimes in emerging countries and um, third world economies, uh, they have a hard time getting paid in dollar and they have uh, huge inflation. So they want to use cryptocurrencies and stable, co stable coins to be paid um, using Salesforce directly. So we're basically fueling their business, but it's not because it's on the blockchain. It's because we're solving a pain point and blockchain happens to be the tool, but it could have been something else. Or is it something a bit different? Um, and is it a case where the person or the company wants to have specifically a foot in crypto because of the prestigious idea of it. Um, you know, j just like a decade ago, it was very fashionable to have an app. Now we have an app where uh, when it's relevant or when it, uh, we don't have it when it's not. But 10 years ago, people were always, oh, we need to have an app. Even if it's worthless, it's useless, but we need to have it because our competition has one. How many users do they have? Nobody. And so is it the same case for you? Is it people having use cases, building something on the blockchain because it's really useful for them and it's going to save them either time, money or energy? Or is it because they have the prestigious idea of, a, of an uh, still a little immature industry where you basically yeah. you, you you know that, your NFT uh, or token just because the others have it? I like your comparison because 10 years ago, building an app was an expensively complex uh, thing. So only the best project, you know, with the highest return on investment could have a app. And today you can build an app in a few, I mean, it's very easy. You have a web page, you know, you click and that generates automatically the apps, almost automatically. Yeah, just in like the, you, the have, you have your NFT. And yeah, if, if, you, if you have a web page, like today, if you need an NFT, you just need to click. If you need a, to, you want to create, you crop your, your own crypto assets, cryptocurrencies, I mean, it, it takes technically talking a few minutes for uh, skilled developers. So the the issue moved from R and D to more business case use case. What I, I think so that, that, that one most people when they heard about blockchain they heard about they hear about uh, crypto assets, which is a truly a, a revolution. I mean a revolution in terms of what it can bring. And I would say most consultants on the market, most legal uh, entities, most uh, people working on that topic will work on crypto assets because this is IT percent of uh, IT project with blockchain are crypto assets. 99% of the money around blockchain is in the crypto assets. But uh, this is not the only thing that blockchain can do. And I personally have some experience in uh, blockchain as a technology itself without coins, without tokens. So if you want my point of view, uh, blockchain can be used for crypto assets, it can be for payments, can be for tokenization of a real life asset, can be for uh, NFTs, can be for fun, can be for vote, and many things. Then you have blockchain for um, digital proof. Mm -hmm. Using blockchain, you know, as a secure solution where data is stored forever that immutable cannot be changed data has been already data has been signed cryptographically 
So you can put data into a blockchain and you can be sure 10 years in the future that the same data is still there. So it's perfect place to put digital proof. So it's perfect place to say, I've done that. I've been there. I have looked, this is my document. This is my information. Uh, we agreed on something and we're shaking hands. So there's a lot of project working on that direction. And the, the last categories uh, is, uh, I would say content sharing, data sharing. So like or consortium project, if you prefer, where you have a bunch of companies that needs to, they, they don't want blockchain. They want to share a distributed database, synchronize with access right, uh, manage, and the capacity to share in real time information. And if there are only two of them, you know, they will build two databases and they synchronize. And if the 10 or 20 of them, they need a new technology and could be blockchain. Mm -hmm. So I do have clients, of course, going to crypto asset side with me. But uh, I would say there is a lot of competition, a lot of smart people, you know, who knows this kind of the business. But when you ask, oh, I want to use blockchain for digital proof, I want to use blockchain for sharing like strategic data with other companies, there are very few people uh, on the market, you know, with some experiences, and, and I'm one of them. So I, I'm spending maybe half of my time on projects related to such kind of, uh, you know, blockchain usage, or use cases. So it's much more than the, as I told you, it's one person of the money of the money on the market for blockchain. Uh, but personally, for me, it's like fifty or sixty percent of the time I, I'm spending on on um, okay. with my clients. So that that if there are consultants such as yourself doing this, that means that the industry is getting mature enough to have business cases, at least enough business cases, so that uh, so that consultants can make a living. There, yeah, there are there are hundreds thousands of projects literally you know of uh, digital proof on blockchain there are thousands of uh, projects going on with uh, blockchain used to share data so what some people call private blockchain dlts there are lots of them maybe very a lot of them it just does this project a b2b project so when you have you know two banks or two car manufacturers or three people working in the textile industry or the you know agro uh, uh, agricultural industry sharing data uh, they don't send the text on twitter they won't create a group on telegram they won't try to do an airdrop so like people don't know about it these are enterprise projects the same way that when you do an ACA, a salesforce project i got you <laughs> the company doing salesforce it's a big project for them they won't send a newsletter uh, like a press news to say hey i'm doing a salesforce project so you won't read it in uh, in, in the newspaper of course. So when you have companies doing a blockchain project for sharing data, often they don't share the information. Sometimes they do, sometimes they don't. So this is why this kind of project, there are many of them, much more than people can think of or know about, but uh, there they, they are plenty of them. You, you know, because you are a fellow Frenchman, you, you may be familiar with the, uh, the expression, uh, with the idiom. In, in French, we say, uh, we talk about this lady, Madame Michu, Miss Michu. We, we basically use that to say, oh, Miss Michu is the, the standard old lady who doesn't really know about, uh, he, she's clueless and she uses stuff. And yes, that lady doesn't know about, uh, about the technology behind. Uh, your grandma exactly. doesn't know about the technology behind, but there are, there are so many people using it. Uh, exactly. Not declaring it, of course. Yeah, but I mean, most, I mean, I don't know who's looking or watching your podcast, probably like in private individuals, people interested in blockchain. People interested in blockchain are often people interested in crypto. And I must confess today, most of the time, people interested in crypto trading, trying to get rich quickly, which is a shame because you, you, you can, I mean, you can go to the casino also, but if you want to get rich quickly, you look at crypto. So you invested in crypto. So you are looking at the crypto news, you know, Bitcoin going up and down, the last ICO, the last token, the last project. So for you, this is for you. For most people, this is blockchain. Blockchain is a bunch of guy on Twitter saying get rich quickly, easily. It's DeFi project with very complex algorithm. But the blockchain technology itself is so interesting that it's being used by hundred thousand dozen of thousands of companies in the world today already which is uh, actually I, th I think these people are well they should make up for five ten percent of our audience most of the people who listen to yeah. this podcast are people who have uh, a knack for business and want to use blockchain to fuel their business but they're they don't come from the tech side they come from the business side which is uh, most of the time when you see people who are talking about blockchain without talking about investment um, they, they just want to, to learn about the tech behind it. They don't have a knack for use cases. 
so that's why I, I'm very happy to to have this podcast because th there was a lack of offer regarding that. And uh, that's quite funny because now that you mention it, um, sometimes I'm promoting that podcast on Google or Facebook or LinkedIn or whatever. And the first reaction of their AI is always to ban the podcast if there's cryptocurrency or blockchain as a keyword or, or as a hashtag. And every time they're saying, oh, no, you're dispensing investment um, investment advice. No, I'm not, say I'm not giving investment advice. I'm just saying things about the, the crypto world and yeah, about yeah, its stake. Yeah. Oh, okay, but you're selling tokens. No, we are not. And... Every time there's a uh, so every time we we get banned and then unbanned, but every time there's um, the need for human intervention in order to to lift the doubt and the ambiguity because most of the podcasts speaking about that and most of the people speaking about blo the blockchain are talking about talk tokens and NFTs and ways to possibly yeah, we, get rich quickly or to get bankrupt we, quickly. We, which I mean the technology. Uh, let's be honest, you know, blockchain has been invented. I mean, Bitcoin invented blockchain, so and and the best use case, the most interesting one overall, are crypto assets. You know, crypto assets is the generic word for all kind of uh, token coins you can exchange on the blockchain, even possibly on a private blockchain, to be honest. Mm -hmm. So it's it's logical. This is where most of the attention is. But if you're a company, and uh, I would say, except if you're in the financial market. Or possibly in the luxury industry, you know, where you think that NFT can be a fashionable tool for marketing. But if you are, let's say, a car manufacturer, uh, blockchain technology is appealing, but not for token. Not for token, for sharing data, storing data, you know, automating processes or lots of different stuff. And so how can it, uh, because you've seen that, uh, how does it help a business to use the blockchain, not to have their own crypto assets, but to do all the other tip of the, uh, you know, everything below the tip of the iceberg. Uh, yeah. How does it help them? So, the, um, the, so as I said, the first category are digital proof. It's very simple to understand. So the, the blockchain is a place where if you put data, data is like time stamped. You know, it was five o'clock today. It's digitally signed. You, you know, you use a public and private blockchain, a key, sorry. So you use a private key to sign. So we can see it's like O3EC, so you, we can see the address that is being sending a transaction, possibly it's you, you can prove it's you, it's Gautier sending information at five o'clock today. And then in the data, you can put whatever you want. You know that in Bitcoin, you used to have in the past cryptography where people were just putting messages, yes. saying hello, hello world, you know, putting songs, putting uh, MP3s. Today in Ethereum, you still have people doing that. You could, so you can send a message and say, I go see, talk to Alan today, and we made a bet on a football game. Alan said that uh, PSG would win the next uh, would win the next Champions League. I'm believing it would be Manchester City, so we're betting 100 pounds or 100 euros. So you sign the transaction, and I'm signing another transaction just after saying, Yep, I'm Alan, and I completely agree with the above message. If I lose, I will send him 100 euros. If he wins, he will send me 100 euros. Yeah, oh, let's say 100,000 euros is better because what happens? So in six months time, you know, we get the end of the Champions League. I win. So I'm asking you, Gautier, give me the money. And you say, no, oh, what money? I never said anything. <laughs> so if I if I go to the tribunal and I say, hey, he told me he would give me and there is no proof, I will have nothing. Yeah, you go to if I go to the tribunal and I say, look, I've got a piece of paper. The, the judge will say, how can I know it's a, it's a real one? If I go to the tribunal, I got, I got, I got a piece of paper and... I've signed it in a bar in front of 20 friends. It's better. And then if say, hey, we've done that in front of a, a, a notary, a public clerk, you know, and then we were in the city or with the city, the, the mayor of the city, they all were present. I've got a picture of me as my, so maybe the judge will start looking at me. Maybe we'll say, this is not the same paper. It's not the same information. Of course. If I come with a public blockchain, I say, look, in the blockchain, he said that, I said that, it was signed. There is no issue with the data. Of course, the judge will maybe say, and this is where the consultant comes, uh, but you're not authorized to make bet like that. You know, it's prohibited to make public bet or don't forget to pay your taxes or lots of other issues can be raised. But there is no more issue with the data itself. So when you're in a business and you need to prove things like digital signature is a basic. You know, everybody knows about digital signature. You use DocuSign, Adobe Sign. So I, do you want to sign this contract? You're okay with that? Click, 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 click. 
So basically, all what you're doing with DocuSign, you can do it with a blockchain. Cheaper, easier, you can automate process. Um, if you, I don't know, working in the intellectual property business, you make picture. No, it's your job. So you go, you go in the street of Paris on a Sunday afternoon. So you have a riot. I, I like every Sunday. You have people demonstrating in the street. You take that picture. One of these pictures is very nice. You've got, a, a, you know, one of our French policemen, you know, knocking down someone uh, with a stick for whatever reason. So you put that picture on your uh, Facebook account. And the day after, the same picture is everywhere, including used by newspaper making money out of your picture. So you want to say, this is my picture. And they say, no, it's mine. I found it, it's open source, and you want to defend it. So now imagine that picture, you made a, uh, we call it a hash of the file, so a digital proof, I mean like digital print of the file, you put it in the blockchain and say, look, newspaper, you made your newspaper, it was nine o'clock, but this picture, I had it in my hands at five o'clock or four o'clock, and I can prove it because I timestamped it into the blockchain. Yeah, as long then, as you can prove that you have access to this blockchain address, yeah, there are lots of things to prove. But then you, you've proved, you, you, it's what we call a proof of anteriority. You've proved that that document, that picture, but it applies also for uh, R&D works in the laboratory. It's work, the same thing if you're in the music industry, same thing if you one of our clients, you know, they design uh, um, uh, like Swiss, uh, Swiss watches. I take uh, a watch. So they change little things, you know, into the watch and they make a new model. And the design itself is very, 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 uh, it's, it's complex, but it's, uh, it's highly protected. Mm -hmm. Because uh, if, uh, 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 like a Chinese, you know, um, if it's often, often Chinese, a counterfeit company could stole it, they would report you the same watch, put it into the market before you. So you have to define yourself. And blockchain can do that very quickly, very easily. So uh, I'm very interested in the, in the topic of IP because there are, uh, there are many philosophical debates about whether you can steal an idea or not. It's a, it's a very interesting ethical question, but let, let's um, not go there, but let's just uh, talk about IP, not from the perspective of philosophy, but from the perspective of um, what the blockchain could do for the, the current system. Uh, does that mean that, uh, because for example, for, for those who don't know in our audience, basically uh, filing uh, at the European offices of pat uh, Office of Patents in, in the European Union, uh, it costs something between $7,000 and $15,000, something like that at least. There, yeah. there, there has to be some kind of interiority research and um, you have to pay for the lawyer and for everything else. Uh, does so you're talking about patent, you know. Yeah, it's, yeah. To be honest, it, it, it's intellectual industry. Uh, uh, it's industry property. Intellectual property is more the what come out of your mind. Oh yes, yeah, like a like a movie script. But it, it's, it's like, exactly but, a movie but, script is a better way because a good example. You have a movie script, so you write your own movie script. You like it, and then you want to share it with people and say, "What do you think of it?" But it's so good that you're afraid you, as a private individual, cannot install it. There, uh, who do you go to? So I'm pretty certain that there is in French one of the uh, Société d'auteur de movie script. I don't the know the name exactly. SACD in French. Uh, the SACD is the one um, where you, where you, you, you basically for the movie script. script. Yes. <laughs> so, so you you can send that script to them. Possibly they will accept it and say, "Okay, I've checked it. It's yours." There is a cost associated. There is a, a delay. And now imagine that movie script. You write a movie script every morning because you're very good. Mm -hmm. Or oh, like twice a day because you're very good and you've got kids at home and that helps you. So do you really want every day, like twice a day, you know, to send uh, papers with stamps with uh, checkbooks? Where well, the only thing that is SACD will do, the real job of SACD, SACM or others, you know, Society of Water, is to collect the money, not to protect you. Mm -hmm. The job is to collect the money once you live with your property. That, that's actually one of the, of the well-known uh, types of anecdotes um, in the film industry. I, I was a film producer in a, f uh, in a previous life, uh, quite a long okay. time ago. I did not know that, yeah. Oh, I had many careers, but uh, w one of these anecdotes is that um, basically you can protect your script, but if someone has pitched the script and protected the pitch before you, you are basically screwed. 
And there exactly. is this famous uh, film producer who um, is French and who makes movies about uh, bad cops and taxis and yamakasis and all these things. And uh, that guy is very well known in the film industry to protect pictures. So there are every now and then people saying, oh gosh, look at, the, at that movie. It's exactly the same intro and script um as what i sent them a few years ago and this is exactly the same introduction shot by shot the sequence is the same the the whole clip is the same as what i sent them and i have the proof that i send that to them but in the end the guy will win because lawyer fees are very very high and yeah, you don't yeah, have yeah. the firepower of that guy and Th that's something that happened quite a lot. So I, I saw an interview of that uh, that very famous French producer who basically said, oh, you can say what you want, but I always won in court as if it was something uh, yeah. relevant. But because the, the, the likeliness of uh, winning in court is really dependent on, on your financial means. Uh, you're right, you're right. The blockchain but at least, a lot at least what you have is being able to prove that you send him this movie or that the, your shots or your scenario, your script, you know, was yours. Five years ago so there is a cost for doing all of that and with blockchain you can automate it and make it very cheap you can do it by yourself you can every day whatever you produce music script stuff stamp it stamp it yeah. so you're in textile industry your company every day you make like new model for cloth you stamp you stamp you stamp so that's just an example uh, but uh, uh, blockchain makes it easy. By the way, in France, uh, La SACEM, so the, yeah. the, the, the the association for defending like music uh, um, yeah, musical artists, musician, musical artists. They did deliver one was that like one year ago, I think, a product called Music Start mm -hmm. using blockchain, oh. where for like five euros or maybe ten euros a month, I don't remember. You know, like everything is timestamp on a blockchain. Th that's interesting. So, so not only the because SASM usually by definition is when you made your final uh, le final, your final like CD or and you put it into Deezer and you put it and you print it and you sell it, at that moment it's published, as you say. Mm. But if you never do that because like you're an amateur artist, but still you produce a lot of things that you put on YouTube and stuff for your fun, um, it can be a problem, you know, to, to defend yourself if someone steals it one day. So it's yeah. just say, yep, give me your file, I'll take your file and I will stamp, 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 step in the blockchain. And if you ever need to recover them, you know, text the file, show me the file, and I will confirm as a, like a, a witness, you know, I will be a third party independent witness that says, yep, that file with that sound was in the end of that artist at that time. So it is him. Yeah, he, he, often people fail to grasp this. They, they struggle with the concept because they think the problem is the lack of proof, but the problem is not that. Blockchain doesn't bring you uh, much better proof than these centralized organizations but the problem is that you have to spend the money then to pay for the people to look at the proof and to make sure the proof is real yeah and that's yeah, another the, issue the, 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 the cost is saved by the blockchain the, the blockchain saves yeah. you the cost of having people check that your proof is real not uh, the, the proof in itself was already existing somewhere else so 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 do you see say one of my personal expertise is digital signature and uh, i'm working with a company called coexia and mm -hmm. uh, we are producing TDG, T-E-D-I-G-I, which is a digital signature platform, exactly that DocuSign. And it's running on a blockchain, on public blockchain, on Tezos. So we do exactly like what you do with DocuSign. It drops three, four, five times cheaper. Because we don't have the same infrastructure, it's very light. The main, most of the infrastructure is on the public blockchain. And the difficulty, we, ha we have a very good product and it's cheap. The and you know what? The funny thing is with digital signature, we are always have the lawyers of our clients saying, ah, but it's not exactly as the competition. Uh, is it really legal proof? So we go into the detail. But one of the key information is that, do you have any idea how many times someone went to the tribunal over the last five years in France or in Europe and says, hey, that not saying I never signed that contract, not saying this contract was unfair, but saying that contract was not signed with a state of the art the digital signature proof uh, was not signed in line with the technical regulation issued by the European um, uh, Parliament because there is a regulation around it. But nobody goes to the tribunal for that. You know, nobody. There is almost no uh, contentious. How do you call it? Like litigious uh, cases. Uh, yeah, litigious case. At the tribunal, on the the technology itself that you use for digital signature, there is a few, but 
So then we have the choice. Do you want to pay one euro to be protected like that, as your point of view, or do you want to pay 10 cent, 10 cent and you'll be protected like that, knowing that the chance that you ever need to go to tribunal is, is almost nil. And if you ever go to tribunal, you can just pay your client and say, okay, leave me, leave me alone. <laughs> Here is your money. I don't want to pay lawyers' fees. So then you analyze the cost of the legal, legal fees, lawyers, stuff, probabilities that you ever need to go to tribunal, you compare it with the cost of your legal protection, and then you say, okay, I'm going for the cheap option. Okay, so you're... And, really and blockchain is a, is a good option, yeah. You're, you're using a probabilistic approach just to see if there's a, a need to... Uh, well, if, if the choice is relevant or not. But uh, do you think there will be a regulation regarding DocuSign on the blockchain? I'm asking because you, you yes, are yes. The, the most qualified if I'd guess to enter, answer this. Uh, there is already a regulation for digital proof. Okay. And and this regulation is compatible with blockchain. Okay. So so you don't you don't have to have a centralized server such as DocuSign uh, in order to prove that something happened. If if we say it happened for, on for, Tezos, it's okay. For digital proof overall, but then for specific use cases like digital signature, you have some more advanced process. I mean, even in digital signature, it depends on what you're signing exactly. So, for example, if you're just signing me a contract, Alana, are you okay if I publish a podcast uh, with you? Mm -hmm. I say, yes, I agree. Blockchain is completely fine. Um, the When it starts to be more complex, is for so typically, if you say, Alan, can I sign a contract for hiring you, you know, like HR contract? You, it's, it's a bit more problematic contract. If you say, Alan, can I sign a contract with you for $1 million, uh, I don't know, business deal? The question is asked. Uh, so you have to look at that. Uh, and then imagine now you, um, you're a bank and you want to open a new account. Along with the contract, you have to check my digital identity. You're a betting website, you know, like mm -hmm. Winamax or whatever else. Yeah, yeah. You, you need to check my identity. So the digital signature goes along the identity verification. And at that time, you know, we go into a more complex analysis of the law. It's not about blockchain. The problem is not the blockchain. Prime is a, a more global approach where sometimes the old technologies are still the best one uh, because you, you need, a, a, you know, a third party, you need someone to check the identity. And even if you go further, if you need to sign a document, if, if you're a notary and you want to do some digital signature or if you're a public administration and you want to sign um, a marché public, like a public uh, market, yeah, a public market. The law is saying white and black, you know, black and white. Uh, you need to use that kind of technology for digital signature. Mm. So they are explicit and they don't say blockchain because when that law was written, blockchain was not even, uh, uh, let's say, <laughs> known like 10 years ago, more than 10 years ago. Yeah. In, um, in the so, world of, of, of film production, we used to say because there were a new format every year, uh, we used to say you allow us to use your image on TV. On, in theaters, on DVD, and on every, stuff? on every, every um, what was the, the the how do, can I translate that? It was on every known and unknown support to this uh, uh, every support known or unknown to this date. Yeah. So digital signature on blockchain, yes, it works very well. But then when you go into specific uh, use case, um, there may be a, a question of, uh, of, of uh, interpretation of the law. There may be a specific law saying, no, in that case, that you need to do something differently. Mm -hmm. So this is, where, this is what typically you need the expert, the consultant. The consultant, I will start and say, let me explain how it works. You see how it works? So do you agree that it could fill the need? Yeah. And then we check the list of documents they want to sign or the business and say, because you're in that industry and you want to sign that kind of document, I would advise you call a specific lawyer to get another third party point of view. Or, or, or I can say, hey, guys, I think you can go, you're free, no risk, it's okay. It's, 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 uh, you know, you're not in a zone of, um, of disc, like legal discomfort. Okay, so you're basically helping them assess the, the likeliness of winning a case uh, in court. Exactly, exactly. They're still responsible of what they will do. So they, I'm just here there, you know, to help them make the choice and highlight the points where possibly, you know, there may be some uh, difficulty. So, and then, so this is the current legal regulation, but there is a new one coming. By the end of 2024, we should have a, a new set of uh, legal framework for digital signature and digital proof in Europe. Mm -hmm. That will encompass a little bit more of blockchain. 
So now we're just crossing fingers that it does it uh, in a smart way. Hmm. Wonderful. Okay, yeah. that's great. And so, um, what do you think are the next challenges for the uh, the evolution of this industry? Now that there are use cases, there are consultants, the industry is getting mature, states are using some kind of blockchain related uh, crypto assets, there is blockchain tech behind many, uh, many so, yeah. institutions. So, so what, what, what are the next steps in, in regulations so now, or tech? Like digital proof or sharing data, these professional use cases, this is an interesting project, but this is not going to make any kind of revolution. Uh, the in, it's not industry-based revolution, it's just you know, improvement on existing technology. Where the, the industry really will uh, uh, evolve and grow, I think it's on crypto assets. All right. Because crypto asset is still a, a, a very small niche today. Mm -hmm. uh, in the, I mean, overall, how many people in France are working in the crypto asset industry? A few thousand maximum. Yeah, yeah. We're, we're still a small family. Yeah, but I still, uh, uh, my point of view, it's very likely that in 10 years' time, there will be one zero more at the end of these figures. Mm -hmm. um, the Typically in 2024, um, I may be wrong. But I believe that every bank will need to develop their own crypto platform. Some retail bank or private bank will do it for the end user, you and I, you know, saying, hey, I want to buy or sell some Bitcoin. Yeah. But most of them will need to do that for tokenization uh, projects, tokenizing securities, tokenizing gold, tokenizing uh, like uh, real estate uh, shares, you know. Uh, fractionized uh, real estates because the tokenization is a revolution the fact that you can share with someone in two clicks on internet bam bam information you know oh i'm, I'm giving you a voucher that voucher is a gift you i uh, i own a bottle of wine i'm sending you the bottle of wine on internet as a token and then you can ask for the the delivery to your app so you can uh how do you call it in, in the token language redeem the bottle of wine but still the bottle of wine can be tokenized so i can buy 10 bottles of wine on e-commerce decide to keep them to uh, then i will say amazon send me one of the bottle and i will keep the nine others you know in my wallet and maybe another day i will uh, take them because i don't have any place to store them so i'm pre I prefer to wait or you can say i'm sending you goti because i like you one bottle of wine so through internet i'm sending you like a virtual voucher a gift uh, for a bottle of wine, it's up to you to redeem it whenever you want. Uh, that's so much more convenient than traditional uh, like e-commerce. If I want to buy gold today, physical gold, it's complex. If I want to buy paper gold, it's complex. If I want to bear, buy pop, 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 like paper gold and I want to give it to my wife or to my kids, I cannot. I have to sell it and I send the money and she can buy it. With tokenization, I can buy paper gold and send it to someone. And then there is a lot of people saying, wow, well, what about, I don't know, uh, like you can use that for um, whitewashing money. It's very good for terrorists. It's very M good for- Money laundering, prosperity. yes, of course. Yeah, money laundering. All those kind of yeah, it's true. This is why for the last four years, we've got oh, so many regulation coming out on crypto. And now we are at the point of the evolution where the technology enables you to tokenize gold, a bottle of wine, or fractional uh, real estate, you know, uh, like uh, property. And the technology works. The regulation is ready. There is nothing today that prevents a bank to launch tokenized gold. I think HSBC did it uh, like last month mm. in UK or in the US. There is nothing that prevents technically or from a regulation point of view, a bank to say, hey, I will uh, offer to the market, you know, tokenize a bond, like non-listed bond. I will tokenize them. So it's easier for us to send, pay, resend non-listed financial instrument. Uh, I don't want to go into too much detail, but we are in a, in a moment in history of the industry where the technology is ready, the regulation is ready, and this technology is much more easier than whatever we've done in the past before. Mm -hmm. And I tend to believe that technology you know, tends to evolve and adopt the most efficient one. 
So probably this bank, the, the one will start and the other one and the other one. And by the end of 2024, I'm not saying they will all have an offer, but they will all have invested because they don't have the choice. And because when a bank, financial institution and bank, institutional funds, uh, big insurances, and each of them, they will need 20, 40, 50, 60, 100 people to run this project. They will buy software. They will need consultants. You know, that will create a good industry for oh. crypto assets. That will be... And that will be crypto assets for real business. I'm not talking about NFTs with monkeys or stuff. No, <laughs> I'm talking about real business. Tick yeah, for the long term. I mean, just because it's something that makes sense, you know, that you can buy a piece of real estate, buy it, resell it, rebuy it, resell it, send it to someone in a matter of uh, seconds. It's something that has some value, much more than board monkeys you know board ape on an nft of course of course uh th that's already what what happens with uh, real.to uh, realto which is uh, uh basically tokenized shares of um, of real estate assets in order to to earn micro rents so that people who don't have the uh, the mental discipline to save a lot of money over 10 years before investing can already start investing a few bucks a, a month in order to to start earning two three dollars as a rent every month and this is growing higher because yeah. they're investing so, so i didn't tell you who are my clients you know I, i've been lucky enough to work with 60 plus companies one of my clients uh, one of the people i worked with is realty uh, so the leader in uh, fractional uh, real estate investment so this is exactly what they do so uh, I, and i like what they do and they do it very well in the us they do it quite well now in switzerland and soon they will do it in other countries the issue is regulation you have to uh, you have to adapt typically in france yeah i don't know if you know that but when you buy or sell equities shares financial instrument there is a tax every time oh. and this tax is the minimum of 25 euros so even if you digitalize the process there is always a tax to pay uh, for non-listed product, so and it's not very well automated. You know, the the, the ministry doesn't really know how to. At the moment, it's kind of um, a, a almost manual process. So there is an issue in France to make automated um, non-listed instruments being shared as uh, efficiently as we would like. But it's being changed. It's being changed. Wonderful. All right. That's. Uh... That's very pleasant to see how the industry is getting mature and uh, to see that use cases are growing like mushrooms. Uh, this is very pleasant and that, uh, that's, that bodes well for the future of the blockchain industry. Thank you so much, Alain. Do you, uh, do you have, You're welcome. Um, do you have any last words to uh, finish this, pos uh, this podcast? Absolutely not. No, thank you very much for inviting me, and I hope I can hear from you and uh, any of the uh, anyone you know watching this podcast with additional questions or with uh, a need, whatever it is. Uh, I mean, feel free to to contact me. I think you find me on LinkedIn quite easily. Everyone, this was Alain Broustai, a French person speaking English very well as usual, and blockchain consultant and blockchain expert among many other things. You will see a link towards his LinkedIn in the description of this video. This was Mutual Knowledge. Like, share and subscribe if you are not subscribed to our YouTube channel. See you everyone. Bye Alain. Bye bye.